Good evening, Sandra and tonight's a regularly scheduled meeting of the select board. It's September 11th, or I'm sorry, it's September 18th. <laughs> Going to call to order at 6.30. First order of business is to approve the minutes from September 11th, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two zero. Thank you. All right, so for new business, we have got a one-day liquor license for Mike's Maze, which I'm guessing is multiple one-day Yes, I licenses. believe it's five, and we have Mr. Wisman on the phone. The dates are Friday, September 29th, Friday, wait, Friday, October 6th, Friday, October 13th, Friday, uh, October 20th, and Friday, October 27th, with rain dates the following day, Saturdays. Is that right? That is correct. I'm glad you had those dates in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. glad he did, too, because I <laughs> couldn't connect. Um, proposed hours, uh, 6 to 9 p.m. This is, um, I don't, I think, it, what, at least the fifth year of the beer maze? Maybe with the COVID? Mm -hmm. 2017, I, we didn't right. do it 2020, so yeah, it's got to be the fifth year we've done these, yeah. yeah. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with it, um, it's Mike's Maze. It's an evening activity for adults, and, uh, and again, David, correct me if I'm wrong, but they set up uh, different stations within the maze um, from different breweries, and as you walk around, you can uh, sample the different beers, right? Yes, so each, each maze has, um, it's a separate maze from the regular daytime maze. Um, and we have six breweries that come um, each night. It varies each night as to who's there. Um, but six local breweries come and set up their, their station. And then the goal is to go out, or the goal for attendees is to go out into the cornfield and try and track down the, all their, uh, their beer tastings throughout the evening. It's, a very popular event. Um, we typically sell out of tickets every, each and each night that we run it. So um, yeah, we're excited to do it again. So that section of the maze is 21 and older only. Yes. Yeah, so this actually our regular um, daytime hours basically end at five, and then there's about an hour of clearing out the daytime people, um, and then. You know the nighttime folks it's a separate pre-ticketed event people buy all their tickets ahead of time um, we check uh, check their names off the list and check licenses um, as they come in um, and then yeah it's a whole separate maze and we make sure we have different wristbands for the daytime and the nighttime so there's no overlap or anything like that it's great i did it in 2018 with my wife and it was a fun time <laughs> oh good okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I will entertain a motion to grant the one-day liquor licenses on the mentioned dates for Mike's Maze. So moved. <coughs> I'll second that. All, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we're all set with you. Great. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Next order of business is complete streets priority. Yes. So we talked a little bit about this last week. Um, you asked me to follow up with the highway superintendent to get a better estimate on the sidewalk for the elementary school and any other thoughts he had on sidewalks. That was really his priority is the elementary school sidewalk. He didn't um, really have any others that, that he was pushing hard for. He got an estimate, it was about $73,000 um, to do the sidewalk. That's approximately 7,000 square feet of asphalt walks with six inches of gravel below it. Priced at about 48,000. Um, four of the ADA concrete pads for the crossings um, at 9,000 and then two flashing solar crosswalk signs for 16,000. So that would, um, 
I am assuming that they knew to include labor <laughs> in, in yeah. this cost. Yeah. Um, so what was the total for the, for the three? About 73,000. For all three, for, for yep. all of it. Yep. And it's maintaining the sidewalk width as it is now at five feet? Yes, yep. Okay. So I was gonna say, you could, I mean, is that, there's no right of way there. But yep. I don't know about, I haven't looked at it for light poles or if there's any obstruction, but you could, you could actually go wider. Yeah, and I mean, knowing what the square foot cost is, we can figure that yeah. out. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll definitely. I'd like to take a ride just to see, but it sounds sounds good. I mean, you should apply. It's, it's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, I think that. But now this is up to five hundred thousand. We can apply yes. for. Yep. Over, over a four year. A four year period. period. Yep. So if there are other things, we can we can certainly apply with this one. The application is due in two weeks, um, but it's really a narrative of the project you want to do and a cost estimate and making sure it's on your prioritization plan. So, um, so we it's could, not a heavy lift, but there is some right, work involved. Right, there is some work. So to start trying to figure out how much of Plum Tree or some of these other ones in two weeks, we really can't. Right. Get much together on that. Yeah. And I would, what I would say is if we're applying for this one, it'll be good because I haven't done a complete streets yeah. application. Yeah. Um, and then looking at, you know, school street, I think that's more of a mass works thing, yeah. but could it be a complete streets project as well? And yeah. looking at the, that in plum tree for the short, next yeah. short enough, it probably could be. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah the only thought is I know you get a, you have to close them out before you can reapply, but. Right. You know, if you could do it and get it all done and get the paperwork in, we could reapply. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my guess is just based on the school year calendar, this yeah. wouldn't happen until after the kids leave yeah. or over spring break, maybe, because um, the plants are going to close down at some point. Right. And, uh, right. Okay. Do you need a motion to do it, or you're all set? To no, I'm gonna. I'll move forward, and then probably at, when you, I'll send you the application, and then you can say yes, Jeff, apply. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. That's perfect to me. All right. All right. Next order of business is appointing South County EMS Director Search Committee working member. Yes. So, um, one of the current South County EMS Board of Oversight members from Sunderland, Tom Feidenkevitz, former select board member, um, volunteered. He, I don't know how long he's been on the Board of Oversight, but he's very familiar <laughs> yeah. with the operations of the organization that he may have been involved in. I believe he was involved in the creation of it. Yeah. So he's very familiar, um, was willing to serve on the search committee as well. Okay. So um, that I thought that would probably be a, a good person to do. Works for me. <laughs> Perfect. All right. All right. So I will entertain a motion to appoint Tom Feidenkevich to the search committee for the EMS director so, for so, South County. So moved. I'll second that. Any discussion? Tom knows he's being nominated, <laughs> etc. for this. So ah, surprise. <laughs> yeah, surprise. Of, <laughs> yes, eh, he does. You won. Um, all right. So hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. And next new business is the South County EMS building lease. Yes. So today we got a draft extension document um, from Deerfield. I sent it to council to review. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward, but never hurts to have, have our attorney sign off just in case there's something weird yeah um, so what if that comes back with no issues then I will put it back on the agenda next week for okay perfect sounds good so old business old business we have got the room rental policy yes the room here at the town hall yes so uh, this was another thing that we discussed a little bit um, last week. First time in a while that we've been approached to rent the room since COVID. I reached out to other communities. Most rooms of similar size rent for more. We charge $25. Most communities charge $50. Um, 
and and if they have bigger rooms more but this size um and have a higher deposits we have a 75 dollar key deposit um, most communities have a 200 to 300 dollar just general deposit for cleaning key whatever um and that should be sufficient for a deep clean of one room if, if there are COVID concerns. Um, the technology, I, don't, I mean, if we're gonna rent the room, I don't, I mean, we could move these things, we could. It, that's, um, they're on wheels, it, it's not that difficult. Um, or we could trust, I mean, people are signing you know, we know who they are. <laughs> they have to leave yeah. information. So if there's anything missing or damaged, um, you know, uh, I think it's just worth considering. We, we had the cameras in here when we rented rooms. I'm sure those aren't cheap either. Um, yeah. And they were, nobody messed with them. Yeah. So um, those, those two things. And then the only other thing that I noticed was that um, whether or not the organization renting the room provides um, proof of insurance is up to the select board and I think it's in my opinion it's good policy just to always require it um, yeah. and then you can make an ex hey it's a nonprofit organization that doesn't have a lot of money okay well you know yeah you know we'll trust you but um, I think those would be my suggestion, and then changing the name of board of selectmen to select board. Okay, so my couple questions on this is again because we've had meetings in here where it's not a large room. Let's face it, not a large room at all, and then we do overflow into, you know, the the, the area out there. Do we? You know if we need cleaning whatever or do we put a size on it up to 40 people you can do this space once you exceed 40 yeah, yeah. again in, in my only thought on this is if we need to clean right mm -hmm. because this room is only going to hold a certain number and you know if the meeting is going to overflow into another space we need to make sure we have that kind of covered on it, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be costing the town $100 to clean this space and that space when they exceed. Yeah, the fee. Yeah, I, and I mean, the other option is to say the room capacity is 40. You can't have more than 40. Yeah. Um, if, if you need a larger space, then you know, we can try and find help you find something, but yeah, that's not. But I mean, one, two, three. I mean, there's right now roughly 25 chairs there. The space here now, obviously, we can extend some of those. I mean, we could probably figure out what, who, how many people were at the caucus last year because it was. Pretty packed room. I don't think it, we could get more than that number of people and in this room. Do we take right? these down? Do we take these down? We could, but no, we do don't we? usually. No, but so for carcass, these tables remain, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, again, we could extend some of those rows, but yeah. I wouldn't think we can fit yeah. much more than 40, 40 in here. Sounds right. Sounds about right. Does that TV move in and out? Or does it always stay there? Uh, it can move. Yeah. It hasn't yet. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, and I'm sure we could talk to FCAT about you know wheeling it, or into the building commissioner's office across the hall and locking that and, the, 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 and the, bringing the it back. requester had a group of fifty, or and how soon was that date? Um, they were looking in early October. I thought. It's fairly soon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it was early October. And I mean, occasional. Oh, Cindy's got her hand up. Cindy, do you oh, have a question sorry. for us? She probably has the answer. So the, <laughs> the group was looking for the very early part of October, the first week. I told them that I didn't know if we would have a room available for them if because it was still under review for a, a, a rental policy. 
So I think they were seeking something else. And some of the options we had talked about weren't available to them for various reasons. Do you know roughly how also, big their group was? Do you know how big their group was, Cindy? I want to say it's about 40 people. Um, so when we put that other table in there, that kind of took some seating away because I think initially that room was for 40 people. But the thing of it is when we bring people in and allow them to use those spaces, they tend to move the furniture all over the place and don't move it back. So well, that's the other consideration. That should be a requirement. <laughs> for sure right <laughs> well it just part of the requirement of getting your deposit back is leaving the room in the same condition you found it agreed so i think i think i guess there are several ways we could go about this if we want to do something quick for this group we can either um, allow them to rent it under the existing policy um, knowing that we're going to amend it in the future um, we could try and amend it tonight or next week um, and let them know what the changes are and if they're interested they can rent it mm. um, or we can continue to talk about it and say I'm sorry the room's not available until uh, our policy has been updated so so I guess questions in my head are, <laughs> is this posted, uh, is the room rental policy posted on the town website? I don't believe mm. so, is it? <laughs> let me check, I kind of <laughs> think it might be. Okay. I'll pop one real quick and let you know. Just because if it is posted for people to see. We should probably then we should let them. <laughs> take advantage of it <laughs> right and then right after then we need to yeah. review it think about it talk about insurance and right everything yeah else. take take the policy down and say under revision or something like that so okay. that's only my opinion I well I think it makes it if it's posted then it's up there and yeah if it's not posted you know we're in a different situation but historically, have they used they've used this room before, or this is the they first have. Yep. So they have. But we don't get many. Even pre-COVID, the history of what you know of it, we haven't had a lot of requests for rentals. No, no. And Cindy would. Yeah. I don't know if that's a new hand, Cindy. <laughs> It is new hands. Okay. <laughs> I've done before. Yeah. The um, the policy is on the website. This group is the only one that's been renting it for quite a few years now, ex outside of COVID. Yeah. Okay. So I think we do have to honor what's yep. currently okay. on our website. It's like price, you yeah. know. No, I'd agree with it. I'd agree with it. Yep. We can, we can fix it. Yeah. And then, right. And then, you know, enter into the agreement with them and whether we take it down, whether, you know, the link just goes to something that says policy under revision, whatever, until we come up with something so that we're not. Yeah. That would be my yeah, that makes sense. thought that of makes it. Sense to me. And keep the, keep room rental policy under old business and we'll keep working yeah. on it until yeah. we. Yeah, yeah, until we come up with something that, yeah, yeah we're really comfortable with. I don't think we need a woman. Great. Yeah. So we'll reach out to to that group and, and yeah. I don't know. Okay. So select board updates. Do you um, got anything? I got a couple. Uh, well, Jeff Mills, we, we met last week with UMass on Wednesday, and we also Dave Zomack from the town of Amherst was there. We talked about um, the, basically the shared use path coming from UMass, coming through through Sunderland, and all the way to Sugarloaf eventually, hopefully one day. But I guess it, I, we learned some things. We learned that it was on the capital plan at UMass. It was kind of sitting in kind of a, in a state of hiatus. Um, but there was interest in maybe uh, scratching at it and seeing if we could get something moving. There was definitely interest from Amherst part. There was some, um, what we learned is that in the past, it, it sounded like there was some opposition to, from the housing complexes on the north end 
maybe maybe because the North Peace requires going through uh, a couple of apartment complexes. There's an uh, uh, electrical easement that comes out at Metal Street. So we're going to look back into that. They're going to reach back to the DPW. Um, Guilford and Jason Skeels is the town engineer. Get some history on it, uh, do some digging, and then we made a two uh, arrangement to meet in two months. So mm -hmm. we'll get an update on that in two months and see see what they've learned and Great. how we move it forward. And then the second one is uh, Thursday. I had we had the meeting at the South County Senior Center here in, in uh, Sunderland. It's my first introduction. I'd never been in there. Um, it's great to learn all the things that they're going on there and to hear the enrollments up. Um, so yeah, I got my first first taste of that. I know they're struggling to try to figure out where their space is going to be. They got some leases coming up and they're working on that. And uh, so it was great, good meeting. Uh, the only thing I'll say is the, the next event coming up is Halloween on the 27th of October at, it looks like 10.30 a.m. I'm assuming that's here, but I'm not positive of that. Yeah, I assume it's here. Yeah. I haven't heard. But uh, again, they do all sorts. They go out, they went down it. They went on to the Big E last Friday, I think. Yeah. And uh, it's a great thing for folks in town to take advantage of, if you haven't already. So what is their Halloween? Is it like get dressed up and I didn't go get to the senior <laughs> center in a costume? I'm assuming it? you get, get dressed up and go. But get some candy? Yeah. yeah. I want to trick or treat. <laughs> I want to be able to trick or treat. Ten, it's on a Friday, 10.30 a.m. the 27th. So you can go check it out. I'll go <laughs> trick or treat. It. All right, that's all I got. All right, I have got nothing that came up this past week, so I guess we will be on to town administrator updates. Yeah, just um, two quick things. Um, one is uh, earlier today we interviewed candidates for the resource administrator position and the permit coordinator position, so my hope is next meeting, possibly the following meeting, to have um, recommendations for appointments. So. Now, how many people did you interview for each one? Or how many applicants did you have? <laughs> we had a total of two for the two positions. <laughs> yeah. So one for each, luckily. Yeah. Um, yes, it, it, yeah. they're both part-time positions. Yeah. Um, but not surprising that we weren't uh, overwhelmed. Inundated with, with applications. It's always good to get one. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and then the other thing is that there have been several cases of triple e in massachusetts not in hampshire or franklin counties um but i th i think camden or southern central mass um and so i have some information uh triple e is rare but very serious due to the severity of the symptoms Approximately 50 people who contract the virus die from it, and those who survive often suffer permanent neurological problems. Um, so they're advising to use EPA-approved insect repellents. Um, there's a list of them on the EPA website. To avoid outdoor activities around dusk and dawn, to wear loose-fitting clothing that will cover exposed skin. Um, thin and tight clothing can be bit through. Um, repair window and door screens and empty yard containers of standing water. Uh, we have additional information on our website um, about things you can do to uh, reduce the likelihood of mosquitoes in your yard, but um, just wanted to bring it to people's attention that until we have the first frost, there's still the, the possibility of um, West Nile and Tripoli, so. That's it. Okay, so. Looks like there's nobody online to ask questions. On that happy so. note. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second it. All those, any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, two zero. And you can call us out at 654. Thank you.